James Morrison, The Voice. I join 98.9 Northwest FM as a volunteer radio presenter in 2012. It was way back then I created Melbourne's Musos, a program dedicated to supporting Melbourne's vast musical talent. In 2016, I created a second program called Homegrown, a program dedicated to supporting Australia's national artists. On Tuesday the 17th of October 2017, I received a letter from the Committee of Management at Northwest FM Melbourne advising that my membership had been terminated. The following presentation details the events that led up to this outcome, but moreover, exposes the management culture inside the tin shed. 98.9 Northwest FM, Melbourne. It should be pointed out at this early point that all volunteer presenters at 98.9 Northwest FM are solely responsible for their programs from the creation of the program, the format of the program, the production and the final presentation of their program. There is no program manager or indeed station manager at 98.9 Northwest FM. Well, I was totally shocked and dumbfounded. Here's a letter sent to me by the Committee of Management, highly accusatory, issues a first and final warning, and then offers an option of appeal. I found the letter very unfair, biased, undemocratic, but moreover, un-Australian. We just don't talk radio. We're interested in our people here.
So essentially, between 9.42am and 1.20pm on Friday, the 25th of August, 2017, I responded to an unsolicited media release sent to me by Cat Swinton at Catless PR in Sydney. I indicated interest in the interviews with Rick Price and Jack Jones if possible. I provided pre-record dates, projected broadcast dates, and was advised by return email from CAT of confirmation once locked in. Now, this was a normal process that I have been through with publicists to arrange interviews with artists numerous times over the last five and a half years. Well, I read nothing in Brian's email that said he had any firm arrangements for an interview with Rick Price or Jack Jones. He stated dates and times to be confirmed. Nothing else. It's important to note Gene Rao's email was sent 11.03pm on Friday the 25th of August 2017 and Brian Peel's email response, carbon copy to myself, was sent 11.07 p.m. on the Friday. Now that's less than an hour before midnight and some nearly 10 hours after my last communication with Cat Swinton at 1.20 p.m. Friday afternoon, the 25th of August, 2017. I had interviewed Rick Price twice in 2016, and we got along quite well, so I wanted to continue the relationship. I found that once the relationship was established between the artist and the interviewer, then subsequent interviews were of a higher standard, and this made for a better end experience for the program listener. Well, it's important to note I stated my view is not Northwest FM's view, policy or directive is. So I'm coming from the viewpoint as a producer and presenter of my radio programs. By the same token, it's not a deal breaker in terms of arranging interviews. It's a preference.
when Brian first migrated from Joy FM a little over a year or so ago, I helped him with basic support. Now, we had discussions about our programs, the formats, and talked about the types of interviews or artists we might likely be interested in interviewing. After some discussion, we both agreed that Brian would let me know of any mainstream artists that he was considering or arranging interviews for in the future. Now, considering that Brian's program is on air 8am on a Thursday morning, and my program went to air 7.30pm on a Wednesday night, then this suggestion was obviously beneficial to both of us to avoid cutting each other's grass when it came to arranging interviews with artists. So, despite stating my view is, in terms of exclusivity of interviews, to Cat Swinton, I also advise Cat that I'd be willing to compromise, read a Rick Price interview, has Brian Peel also displayed interest. So essentially, the final dates for the Rick Price and Jack Jones 
pre-recorded interviews were now finalised. Three quarters of what we do here is the engagement with human beings, engagement with people, people driven radio. Well, in previous years, a copy of the Northwest FM Constitution was pinned to the General Notice Board for presenter's reference. However, sometime in the last 18 months or so, that copy of the Constitution was removed. Now, between the 9th of September 2017 and the 11th of October 2017, despite numerous searches, I found no copies of the Constitution in the foyer or on the general notice board or anywhere else in the station for presenter's reference. Cat's email was succinct and to the point, and I quote, James asked for exclusivity on his program, but not has a Northwest directive. This was the second request for a copy of the Northwest Constitution to be made available to me.
Well, I found it a little strange that the Northwest FM incoming phone line was ringing as normal within seven to eight minutes of me leaving the station on this day. I felt like I had been summoned to appear before a judge in a high court. The committee approach was very intimidating, bullying, and very confrontational. As I tried to communicate the events in chronological order, Jean Rao began to interrupt me and question every point I raised. It was, it was like being cross-examined by a prosecutor in a court case. At one point, when I was explaining the communication between myself and Brian Peel, Robin Scott verbally attacked me and accused me of making demands on another presenter. Now, I might add, I've never been formally introduced to Robin Scott. I've never spoken to her before. So this verbal attack out of nowhere was quite offensive and I was quite taken aback by it. Almost immediately, Jean Rao jumped in and backed Robin Scott in the verbal attack, behaving in a very intimidating, bullying fashion. There was an obvious air of animosity being projected by Bob and Jean Rao, and also Robin Scott. The effect was very confrontational. The psyche within the radio station is generally extremely good. We do not have big arguments in the station. We don't have much angst at all. It's a lovely, friendly place to come to.
I tried to defend myself by asserting verbally that I had not yet provided all the details relating to the committee's allegations. Well, Bob Rao cut me off mid-sentence and was backed by Jean Rao. Bob then elected to take a paragraph from my email response to their letter of accusation, 9th of September 2017, and the paragraph read as follows. I pride myself that my guests being interviewed are exclusive to my program and therefore are not interviewed by other presenters on 98.9 Northwest FM. Well, Bob began to badger me, asking, did I write this? Is this what you said? This is part of your email response. I remained calm. I said, yes, I did state this in my email response to you. Read your letter of accusation sent 9th of September 2017. At this point, the exchange became heated. I advised Bob Rao that he was taking the paragraph out of context, misrepresenting my intention, but moreover, potentially misleading the committee. I further stated I had not suggested that this exclusivity was a Northwest FM policy, directive or rule, but moreover, a personal preference in my role as a producer-presenter of my radio programs relating exclusively to guest interviews. Everyone who comes in that door is an equal. Once you enter the door here, you are a family member of Northwest FM. I left the studio and went to the foyer to call a taxi. Moments later, Emmanuel Brincat, the Vice President, came out and stood in the foyer. He said nothing. I proceeded to call the taxi and exited the station. Emmanuel hurriedly closed the door behind me and said good night. Now, it had been raining heavily that night and was still raining. Unfortunately, I didn't have an umbrella. This was the third request for a copy of the Northwest FM Constitution to be made available to me.
Well, I'm not sure why the committee saw the necessity to raise the subject of illegal entry or trespass, or indeed make a threat to that end. I can only again refer to the entrenched, intimidatory and threatening behaviour of the committee. This letter stated unacceptable behaviour has the reason for the first and final warning in the letter of accusation 9th of September 2017. During the committee meeting on the 11th of October 2017, this accusation was not clarified, substantiated or any evidence presented by the committee to support this allegation. The reference here to events outlined in the letter 9th of September 2017 is quite ambiguous. The letter 9th of September 2017 is a letter of accusation. Now, out of the blue, the committee states my membership subscription has not been paid and consequently my membership will not be renewed. Now, there's been no reference to this up until this point. Well, I'm not sure why the committee saw the necessity to raise the subject of illegal entry or trespass, or indeed make a threat to that end. I can only again refer to the entrenched, intimidatory and threatening behaviour of the committee.
Well, I had contacted the CBAA previously and was referred during that call to Danny Chifley when I had been advised of suspension at the conclusion of the committee meeting on the 11th of October 2017. Effectively, Bob Rao had blocked his personal email address since the last notifications. Hence his referral in writing to use the admin at northwestfm.org email address for further contact, which I did. I am unaware if some presenters have access to this particular email inbox. I am aware, however, that some presenters who carry out specific roles within the organisation do have access to the station's dedicated email inboxes, of which there are several. This email was received the 26th of October 2017, over a week after my last email on the 18th of October 2017. However, the letter attached was dated the 20th of October 2017. Well, I was confused after reading this statement. The previous letter of termination, 17th of October 2017, referred to Northwest FM's membership policy as follows. The Northwest FM membership policy states that a breach of any of these points will result in termination of membership. I have therefore followed the appeals rights process in Northwest FM's constitution when advised 
of termination of membership. Well, I'm a little confused as to the Committee of Management's advice that my membership status was four months in arrears as of the 11th of October 2017. I paid my subscription for 2016 on the 18th of October last year and the invoice for this year's subscription was dated the 25th of July 2017. So I'm a little confused as to the four months in arrears statement. I found the phrase, decided to act generously, a little hard to take. The right of a member to attend an arranged meeting to present their side of events is in North West FM's constitution under item 20, notice to member, point 1, subrule D.
the committee have not clearly defined how any of their accusations or allegations made in their letter 9th of September 2017 or at the committee meeting 11th of October 2017 are a breach of any of these points detailed in the Northwest FM membership policy. Well, there you have it. Inside the tin shed, 98.9 Northwest FM, Melbourne. I hope you've enjoyed this video presentation. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all of my followers, supporters, and of course listeners of Melbourne's Musos and Homegrown over the last five and a half years of broadcasting. I also would like to extend a very special thank you to all the musicians who participated in both programs over that period. I hope to be supporting Australia's musical talent again in 2018. And on that note, time for me to put on my hat, make like a shepherd, and get the flock out of here. I've been James Morrison, The Voice, and you've been whoever you are. Stop doing that while I'm talking to you. I hope to hear from you all again in 2018. Until then... <laughs>